In this screencast, we are going to take a look at a particle undergoing harmonic motion and determine the allowed energies and wave function for this particle. This curve is a general potential energy curve of a diatomic molecule, for example, hydrogen gas. At very small distances between H atoms, the potential energy of the system approaches infinity because the repulsive nuclear forces between the two atoms. At very large distances, we can see the potential energy approach zero because the two H atoms are no longer interacting. So for this discussion, we're going to focus on the equilibrium distance where potential energy reaches a minimum and our two atoms are covalently bonded. In this region, we can approximate the potential energy curve as a quadratic function where our molecule will undergo simple harmonic motion. If we take a look at one of our H atoms, this particle is going to feel a linear restoring force equal to minus kx. So in this case, k is our spring constant and x is the distance from the equilibrium position. And then the potential term will be 1 half kx squared. So now that we have our quadratic potential defined for our particle, let's take a look at the general Schrodinger equation so that we can determine our wave function and allowed energies. So here you can see we've plugged in 1 half kx squared for our potential term. So what about our boundary conditions? Uh, well, we know that our particle will not be found at very large distances from equilibrium position because the potential energy rises to infinity there. So we can say that the wave function will be zero when x equals plus or minus infinity. Now back to the Schrodinger equation. Solving this equation is very mathematically involved. So let's skip ahead to the result and use the solution to determine the allowed energies. The solution shows that the wave function for a harmonic oscillator has the form psi of x equals n times some polynomial in x times a Gaussian function. Here n is a normalization constant and the specific polynomials are called Hermite polynomials where y is equal to x divided by the constant alpha, which is shown here, which equals h bar squared divided by the mass times a spring constant. This table shows the first few Hermite polynomials for the lowest four energy states. Now that we have the general form of the solution, let's plug this back into our Schrodinger equation to solve for the energies. And let's start with the lowest energy state where nu equals zero and the corresponding Hermite polynomial equals one. We'll need the second derivative of our wave function with respect to x, which is shown here. Now if we do a little rearranging of our terms here, we see that the second derivative with respect to x of our wave function is equal to minus one over alpha squared times our wave function plus x squared over alpha to the fourth times our wave function. And now we can plug this back into our Schrodinger equation using our definition of alpha and simplify. So after plugging all of this back into the Schrodinger equation, we find that the lowest energy state, also known as the zero point energy, is equal to h bar over two times the square root of k over m. Now the square root of k over m is just the frequency of oscillation of a classical harmonic oscillator of the same mass and force constant. This is often denoted as omega, so let's make this substitution here to define our zero point energy. Now if we went along and did this exercise for higher energy states, what we would find is that the allowed energy values are e sub nu equals nu plus one half times h bar omega. Again, we see the energy levels take on discrete quantized values, and in this case, the spacing between adjacent energy levels is equal to h bar omega. One important note is that in this system, the atoms are actually vibrating relative to one another. So a question you might ask is, which mass should you use in order to predict the frequency of vibration? For diatomic molecules, where there's only one mode of vibration, the effective mass mu is used. Mu is equal to the mass of the first atom times the mass of the second atom, divided by the sum of the two masses. So at this point, we've determined the wave function and allowed energy levels for our harmonic oscillator system. 